What's up, Metalheads? My name is Jamie. This is the Blades and EDC channel, and welcome to the Spider Co. Customization YouTube channel. <laughs> or at least that's probably what it's starting to feel like to you guys. I am going through a phase. I don't know what it is. I just want to buy knives and change them around, and we're going to do it again today. I hope you stick around and watch it. And this is one that you've already seen me change around, and I changed it around again off camera. This is the second pair of three. You guys saw my uh, installation of the Nebula. Uh, fat carbon scales on this pair of three my new pair of three this is the pair of three I got with the scales so I'll put the lime green scales on it and then I anodized my titanium hardware and pocket clip purple and that lime green and purple man goodness gracious does that look good that looks so so good really uh makes me think about getting a backspacer and doing a purple in this knife also I think it would look really good but yeah, so I just want to show you that one real quick. This is not the knife we are customizing though. If you watch my most recent anodizing video, you saw I anodized a pocket clip and was going for a couple different colors of blues. Well, I didn't, wasn't a fan of that. And then once I get the knife here and the scales here that we're about to customize, I decided to go a different route. So I took that clip and I did a brushed finish on it. Hopefully you can get that brush marking to show up on it. it almost looks like grind lines, but it's much cleaner than that just a wire brush finish on a titanium pocket clip no color no color believe it or not because i got these scales Ooh, arctic storm fat carbon and then when i look at all the other hardware and everything on the knife i just thought to myself rips garage tech by the way makes some of the best fat carbon scales out there and i swear he does he does such a good job and hadn't figured it out yet. We are customizing the Spyderco Smock. And, um, you know, I looked at the satin finish on the blade. You guys know I've been doing a black, I've been doing a theme with my Spyderco's black blades. They make a black bladed Spock. It's an M4, which I'm not crazy about because it's not very corrosion resistant. Plus, they're hard to find. So um, I decided just to go with the regular S30V Spyderco. We've got the satin button, satin hardware. And I think it's going to look good. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to look good with that. Just imagine if it was on the right side. That brushed finished pocket clip. I think that's going to turn out really, really good, actually. And uh, down the road, may do a backspacer on this, too. And I also considered with these scales, man, it, what else may look good? Blue and gold go well together. A gold... Uh, clip and a gold button it may look good but i don't know with that satin finish on the blade i'm thinking this is the look right here this is the way to go so we're about to find out uh this knife is new it still has its second detent in it i think i'm gonna leave it in there um you know what they say two balls are better than one or at least in my opinion i'd much rather have two than one personally i don't know how you feel about it but i'm happy with the two i have so we're probably going to stick with two um so let's jump right in here we got some tools and stuff here that we need. I don't have my glasses on, of course. Now I do. And uh, let's take it apart. Let's do this. I took one of these apart. It's been like a year or so. We're going to get rid of this pocket clip. We know we are not going to need it. Our knife joy mat here that was donated to the channel by I. Hold on. Are those screws titanium? No. I'm getting a little magnet magnetism there, but they're not very magnetic. So they are not titanium. I didn't think they were, but Alright. If you guys stick around for another one of these longer videos, I do appreciate you. Thank you very much. And I know some of you just skip right to the end to see the final product. That's cool too. You know, I get it. I get it. I'm trying to remember which side the double detent's on. I think it's on the detent ball's on this side, that little spring and ball. It's been so long since I took one of these apart. And I think we've got to take the entire knife apart to swap the scales. I can't remember. This one doesn't have your typical, uh, like a pair of three um, pivot. 
it actually has a regular pivot like most of the other knives in the world so of having that little middle pivot piece and then you put a washer on each side this is actually on cage ceramic ball bearings so it's done more like more modern knives are done definitely got some loctite on there is that spinning i thought that was a captive pivot no it's not spinning that's just loctite t8 on the pivot screw t6 on everything else you gotta be careful taking this thing apart too because that little ball will fly out on you you'll lose it so the spring doesn't make it shoot off but it will make it fall out all right, so let's go ahead and get this stock pin out of here. Oh, wow, that went flying. Stand by. I heard it hit. It hit the carpet. Oh, shit. I may have to pause this and break out my magnet. That thing went flying. Um. Oh, found it. Found it. We good. We good. Found it. Man, that took off a lot faster than I expected it to. Anyway, we'll go ahead and slide that right in there. Although it does not fit nearly as tightly as the original does, that could become problematic. We can make it work, though. We'll just leave that out for now so we don't lose it. All right, let's go ahead and open this guy up. And grab our rag here some of this down definitely dirty from the factory although this was traded to me it was traded to me as new it looks new but I don't know I think it's been in somebody's pocket from the look at things that's no problem I ain't mad at him now that second little ball detent is right underneath this blade right now it's right there so you got your regular detent under here there's another ball sitting on top of a spring I'm thinking about this am I gonna have to fully I am gonna have to fully disassemble it change both scales so there went the ball see fell out All right, let's just go ahead and take these loose here T6 though. I have a new uh, driver coming. I'm pretty excited about new quarter inch driver. Much more affordable. I hope it's pretty good because if it is, you guys, are, it's gonna. I think a lot of you are gonna like it. Um, we'll see. Man, I'm just dropping stuff everywhere today. What's going on with you, Jamie? I just dropped that screw. Tell you what, most of the time I don't like having like a wider car carpet, but today I'm pretty happy I have it. Get those out of there. Get that out of there. Get that out there. There's the spring. See the spring sitting in the scale? Alright, so let's go ahead and get that transferred over so it does not get lost. Right back in there where it goes. You bet you. I'm not sure why they did this. I mean, a lot of people remove this ball and this spring. I don't know if they do it because they don't want to deal with putting it back together with it, or if they like it to, the blade to completely free fall drop. Um, I don't know. I don't really mind the blade uh, dropping the way it does. So, our D, our chair, right there. Should line up right over our spring. Let's go ahead and put these standoffs in here. They are captive, so they only go one way. Probably should have left that spring out, put it in after I did this, so I don't risk dropping it, because if I drop that thing, I'm not finding that just by looking for it. No way. I will have to break out the magnet. So it's going to fall. It's going to fall on this mat. 
I'm gonna leave it in. I'm gonna leave my second D10 in. Let me take it out down the road. When I originally got the smock, took it out, so I really only know it with the D10 out. I didn't really, because that's what everyone else was doing. I was new in the knives, and that's what everyone else was doing and saying to do. And so I did it. Didn't really ha experience it very much with the second D10 in there. So I'm gonna leave the second D10 in there this time and uh, see what I think. My spring's still in there. Yes, my spring is still in there. My pivot did fall out, but we will put it back. Yes, we will try. Helps if you put it in the right way. All right, stay in there, spring. All right, captivity goes down that way. All right, what's going on here? This pivot should already been in there. This should not be difficult. This should not be difficult at all. Right, let's go back. Let's go in reverse here and see what happens. Yeah, so we should go through right there, but we're hitting something. You see that? We're hitting a scale. Let's loosen up these screws a little bit. Give us a little movement. And try, try it again. I think we'll be all right. I always suck, struggle to see the captive pivots. There we go. So now we're in there. So now we can tighten. Tighten these back down, I think, would be good. Not going to over tighten, just snug them a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. Bearings. Pretty dry. Very, very dry. We're going to make that all better, though. We're going to lube it up using the uh, Zero Friction uh, by Pro Shot. Great lubricant for your bearings. Much more affordable than a lot of other options out there and works every bit as good in my personal experience. All right, we got the looby doob. All right, this is the tricky part. Get in the hole. Oh, not that hole. You bitch. I should have got tweezers out to do this. All right, there we go. So you want that ball right there. Want that right there. We gotta get our stop pin put in in a minute here too. Let's wipe that down. All right, now we need a little KPO heavy on our detents. So you have two holes in the blade, one for each detent. Maybe, I'm not sure why they did that maybe just because it didn't have enough detent to where they felt like it would be safe for people to carry in their pocket so they added the additional detent to give it a little more you know make it a little better i don't know but honestly i've used this knife a lot without that second detent in there I never had an issue with it opening up in my pocket or anything so i don't really know what that was all about all right stop pin um all right all right that's on that ball i think the stop pin goes here right all right actually i have to go in here because it's captive all right how are we looking we looking good we almost there this has gone better than expected 
much better than most of my disassemblies go. It's because I've done this before, but it's just been a long time. You know, I do like to put a little lube in there and let that stop pin right on it. Should have done that on the other side too, but I'm not going to do it now. We've gone this far. All right, let's see if we can get this stop pin in there now. And get it through to the other scale. Keep some pressure on this so that detent does not come out. All right, we are in. We are in there. Now we got to get this one in here. This one is the serious pain because this is not going to want to stay in there like it typically does. So I guess we're just going to drop it in here. Like that. I'm going to ride down that track. Let me both put that right there. Okay, with we'll a pivot screw in there. My buddy Craig on Instagram just built one of these. And he used purple haze fat carbon and he acid etched his blade, it looks like. And that acid etch looks really good. He did. He maybe even acid etched it and stone washed it. Actually, I don't think he used fat carbon, purple haze fat carbon. I think he used uh, purple dark matter. That's what it looked like. I'm not worried about the pocket clip yet. Let's see where our centering is. Are we pretty close? We are pretty close. Very close. That's dead nut centered. Still got some blade play though. Oh, that won't turn. What are you doing? Another blade. I still got a little tiny bit of blade play there. No blade play. We are out of center. We're dead center. We drop them like it's hot. Still got some blade play. been centered forever but that screw just keeps going in but it's not going it's not taking it out of center so okay that went a little too far let's go check it now no blade play all right we good I'm not like tightening this at the moment but I probably will in the future at least I will the pivot I haven't made up my mind yet on that second detent, so I'm not going to lock tight it at this point in time until I make my mind up. Line that up. Get in the hole. Let's loosen these other two up just a tad. Hmm. Hold on a second. What's going on here? Looks like their holes are slightly off here. So I'm just going to loosen them all up for you, tighten any of them down, get them all started, and then tighten them down. Is that going in? 
Yeah, there we go. Turn that flashlight off. After this is done, we tighten all this down. I'm going to pull out all the custom, customized spider codes, let you see them for any of you that want to see them. I love looking at them and playing with them. All right. Get the disassembly mat out of the way. Thank you, ID, very much once again for the mat. I greatly appreciate it. Here we go, and there it is. Definitely got to wipe that blade off. It's one thing about the smock, man. It has one of the best looking blades Spider has ever done. There you go, guys. There is the smock with Rips Garage Tech Arctic Storm Fat Carbon Scales, a blade we love, pocket clip that I did a brushed finish on. Bring out some more fat carbon for you. Here's uh, the pair of three with Rips Garage Tech fat carbon scales. These are the skinny scales, though. Uh, well, we'll just do bring up Spider Coast. Here's that pair of three I showed you at the beginning of the video with the Amazon Special Lime Green, green uh, Lime Green G10 scales and Blades We Love hardware kit. And uh, Lynch pocket clip that I anodized purple and the hardware I did purple. Got the Joker theme going on here. Here is the Manix 2 with the AWT scales and the Rips Garage Tech Nebula Fat Carbon pocket clip. And here is the Yojimbo 2 with the Flytanium Raindrop uh, Fat Carbon scales. A Lynch clip that I've done a custom finish on to try to help it sparkle with the scales. And then I decided I changed the color on this again to teal. I've had it gold, I've had it purple, I went to teal. I think I'm going to go back to gold. I think gold may be the way to go on this one. I think it looked the best with the gold clip personally. So those are the Spider Co. customized ones. And uh, go ahead and pull out a couple more here. Here's a Pinch made bug out. Flytanium scales, uh, flytanium pocket clip and screw and hardware set, I think, and, and thumb studs, if I remember correctly. Here is a, another bug out with um, custom scale division, red dark matter scales, and some aftermarket thumb studs, standoffs, red. And I think that's it. We'll go ahead and show you some more fat carbon here, though. There's the uh, drop bear with the, art, the uh, toxic storm. There's the Feist XL with the purple haze. There's the AD 20.5 with the purple haze. Here's the AD 20.5 with OG goat scales and custom anode titanium clip backspacer and thumb studs. This is where it's at for me, guys. I think I'm through the Spider Co. phase. I still want to get a Native 5 and customize it. Um, I don't know when I'm going to do that, though. And then I think we'll start doing something else on the channel. I don't know what I'm going to do after this, though. It's just a thing I've been doing. I just love customizing the knives. I love them so much more if I put my own touch to them. And uh, I don't know. I don't know when that's going to go away. I think we've just made move to a new brand, possibly. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm thinking a Hogue Deca, something else made in the USA, another Axis Lock, and uh, lots of stuff to customize it. Also, when I get a mini Griptilian, a mini uh, Hogue RSK, um, the Native 5, probably want to customize a little Native at some point, and a Kapara at some point. But for now, I don't have anything left to customize again. I'm time to move on to some other things for the time being. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all on the next one.